Welcome to Five True Singles. This story is from Jane Espenson and was recorded August 31st, 2013 at DragonCon in Atlanta. The theme was, There Goes My Hero, Pop Culture Pros Tell Real Life Stories of Good and Evil. Hey, everybody. You know, the great thing about the drawing the random names out um, for the random order means that you don't get nervous knowing you're up next. Unless you're the last name <laughs> called. And then that's all that's going on. It's like, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next. Um, but here I am. Okay. I'm telling you, think of real life stories of good and evil. For me, it was good and bad. The good kids and the bad kids. And I was a good kid. A really good, like all the way through, like to this day. I've never had my bad phase unless it's like now. Um, <laughs> like, and I was the genuine kind of good girl. Like the follow the rules. Um, like uh, no drugs ever. I actually made a conviction early in my life that I wouldn't even call drugs by their street names because then it sounds like I've done them. So <laughs> to this day, I don't talk about pot. If I have to talk about it, I, have to, I will say things like, you know, the marijuana cigarettes. <laughs> Cause, and I was like a little teetotaling, annoying teenager. Remember there was that uh, story they did once on Freaks and Geeks where the... Um, they were, the teenagers were gonna have a party with alcohol in it. And there was the one annoying little girl who was like, I'm gonna come to your alcohol party and I'm gonna have more fun than you so you'll see that it's better to not drink. That was so me. It was, it was very irritating. And so um, it was very much that like, I liked the song Goody Two Shoes, that don't drink, don't smoke, what do you do? Because I didn't get that that was a wink at Goody Two Shoes. I thought it was actually like my anthem. <laughs> um, and I thought the, the Holland Oates song, like, I can't go for that, no, no can do. I thought that was, a, I assumed from having only heard that little clip, because I only heard enough of the songs that they played on like the KTEL record collection ads, so I only knew a little bit of all the songs, because I was just watching TV and not listening to the, the actual music. I assumed that that song was about a guy whose girlfriend was pressuring him to go too fast. And he was saying, I, I, won't, I won't go for that. And I was like, it's a song about good boys. I love this. Um, and all the other kids, of course, were being bad kids. And they were listening to the rock and roll. And, and Kiss and Tom Petty and, like, like scary, shreddy guitar sounds. And, like, I went, I went actually yesterday and I researched, like, what were they listening to and what were they watching? And I found a Tom Petty video that I have vague memories of having seen on MTV when I was a kid. I was disturbed by it then, I'm disturbed by it now. <laughs> like, it's an Alice in Wonderland theme song and she goes into Wonderland and he dro dro blows, like, drug smoke on her. <laughs> and then it, like, gets all weird and hallucinatory. And then at the end, she turns into cake and they eat her. <laughs> This is everything I was opposed to as a child. It's not right. And I, I was an only child, so I wasn't really around a lot of other kids. And so like, when you and your friends were like rolling around on the floor of the fancy restaurant wrestling, it was me and my parents like eating fondue and looking over at you like, well, I wonder what's up with them. I was just like a good girl. And there was sort of, and it was, school was kind of rough. There was like one girl that I would talk to in a homeroom because she was sort of quiet like me and she would sort of sit there like wearing sunglasses, me real quiet and I'd talk with her. And it was like, oh, she's good, she's quiet and like kind of deep. And, and then it, she got hauled off to rehab one day. She'd been hung over the whole time. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, but there was one place where you could go to when you could find good people being rewarded for being good people, and that was on the sitcoms. So um, while everyone else was listening to that music, I was watching the sitcoms. When I was a kid, it was the 70s, and the two big monster shows on TV were Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley. And like that, they were candy colored, there was a moral, um, they had peppy theme songs. The, um, the Vernon and Shirley theme song, um, you remember it starts with that shlemiel, shlemazel. The end of it though, it goes to making our dreams come true for me and you. It's lovely, dreams, and it's, and it's clean, and it's the 50s, and it's lovely. And there were, and sitcoms, they had morals, and there were, nobody was drinking or drugging unless there were terrible consequences. Um, and there were lovely heart moments too. There was an episode of Bosom Buddies that I remember very, very fondly. <laughs> Do you remember this moment where 
Kip or Henry, there was a girl, Amy, Wendy Jo Sperber. She had the crush on Henry. And at one point he was like trying to get someone to dance. And he was like, well, if no one else will dance with me, there's always Amy. And she looked shocked and he had to go up to her later and apologize. Um, and say, so, you know, I didn't mean to take you for granted, but you know, I was trying to look cool. And she was like, you know, Henry, I was really disappointed in you because I thought you were a gentleman in the real sense of that word, a gentle man. And if that's not really what you are, then like, I'm, I'm sorry I had this crush on you, you know. And, um, and it was this beautiful scene. It was like, I want to be there. I want to be inside the TV. I want to be the people who live in the world that makes those shows. Like, I'm going to go to a place of like, no drinks and no drugs and strong moral choices. I'm going to go to Hollywood. <laughs> So I packed up and I went to LA and I got into sitcoms and it turns out the rooms were a little rough. <laughs> the rooms are full of these kind of tough body guys, not tough guys, but body guys that want to, they want to like poke at you and make you cry if you're, if you're sort of a good girl. Um, so like my friend Alexa has a story about like, she went up, she was in a sitcom room, she got up to go to the bathroom. When she came back, there was a Polaroid of a penis sitting in front of her at her place. And they said like, we took that when you're out of the room, you have to guess which one of us it is. Like, That's what rooms were like. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I was actually asked in a room once, like, um, so I bet you're a wildcat in bed. You seem like you're a wildcat in bed. And everybody just turns and looks and waits for it. And it was appropriate. It was allowed for people to talk like that. It still is. Sitcom rooms, you know why? Because you're supposed to be able to say anything in a sitcom room because it's a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> it felt ironic. Um, and I was, in, I was in one room that had a guy who uh, had been a sitcom writer forever. He'd actually worked on the... Um, the Star Wars Christmas special. And he had, he had a way of not, he, he was a really good guy, but he couldn't not be funny. And sometimes the quickest way to be funny is to insult someone. So there was a day where I was like, oh, like exasperated because he'd been making fun of me all day. And he said, what? I've been really nice all day. I haven't even said anything about the hair. <laughs> all right, okay. One day I was in that same room and I mentioned how much I'd love Buzz and Buddies. He wrote that scene. That scene that had like touched my heart and made me go, okay, all right. So it's like all a sham. It's all paper thin. Like no, no, nobody ever meant anything they wrote in those shows. And like I staggered through, but I eventually, a few shows later, I got on this great room where the guys were cool and they understood me and they kind of believed what they were saying. And it was like, it's true. It's really, it's really out there. It's wonderful. I, let, I found my home. Like it's the best job in the world. And. One day, that staff and I were coming back from lunch, and we were, had to get back to our room. We had to walk through the halls at NBC, and we had to walk by where they shoot um, The Tonight Show. And we walked past, and they were leading the guests from the green room up to on stage. And I saw Penny Marshall. And it was like, Penny Marshall, Laverne, from Laverne and Shirley. Like, this is one of those people who made me believe this was out there. And everyone else, all these other guys on the staff were excited, too. And it's like, they got it. They grew up the same time I did. This is why they came into sitcoms. This is all really cool. We get back to the writer's room, and they sort of elbow me, and they say, tell the writers this is who we saw. Tell them who we saw. It's really cool. And I said, um, we saw Penny Marshall. And they all turned and looked at me and said, that was Tom Petty. <laughs> The story that you just heard was the absolute truth.